The name Ghassan comes from the first Ghassanid state founded in 220 CE by His Majesty King Javna ibn Amir and comprehended parts of modern-day Syria, Jordan, Iraq, Lebanon, and Saudi Arabia. Since the fall of the first state in 638 CE, the Ghassanid dynasty has ruled several other realms like the Byzantine Empire, the Rasulid Sultanate in modern-day Yemen, and the principalities of al Ahura and Skarta Zewe in modern-day Lebanon, from 1211 to 1747 CE by the Christian branch of the family and the principality of Jabal Shama, a transliteration of the surname Shmoor or Hayil in modern-day Saudi Arabia until 1921 CE by the Muslim branch. The sovereign, imperial and royal house of Ghassan is the dynastic, historical, legal and cultural representative of the royal Ghassanids and the Ghassanid people. Since no longer ruling, the royal house presently is an international, non-profit, apolitical, secular, cultural, educational and a charitable umbrella organization recognized and accredited by the United Nations and the government of the Lebanese Republic, being responsible for several affiliated organizations, fraternities and initiatives with the specific purposes of the promotion of the historical and cultural Arab heritage, especially but not limited to the Ghassanid people, the notorious Ghassanid's ideals such as the broad cultural incentive women's equality, democracy, the promotion charity, and the chivalric ideals. Also, the promotion and application of the principles of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. The Royal House is a non-profit recognized by the United States government as a tax-deductible charity under Section 503C3 of the IRS, Internal Revenue Service. In 2020, the Ghassanid dynasty has celebrated its 18th century's anniversary since the establishment of the first Ghassanid state in modern-day Syria in 220 CE. As I always say, I strongly believe that a title, just as a personal honor, is utterly useless in the 21st century. The only reason to justify the title is relevancy. The reason why my family and I keep this tradition is because we believe that even when you use your rights, you still have obligations and duties. And I'm very proud that my ancestors and relatives have preserved these titles legally, but not only that, they actually have done something for our people, even when no longer ruling. When uh, my father came from Nigeria, and this was like in the year 1947, 48, the area lacked of, of water. My father had some water. The villages around Farhata and asking my father about how they can help, help them if he can find any way with the government, which he tried. And in fact, they, the government didn't do anything. So my father, he took the decision and he said, okay, fine, now if the government cannot do it, I will do it. And in fact, he, uh, he provided water for like something like 48 villages and all, all was done from his own money, from his own effort and uh, this, this, this water is still running till today and people are still drinking of this water till today. He, he felt that it was his, his duty to help. He was happy, let's say, helping. Uh, all these, all these, all these people. At the end of his days, he had to go to, he had to do some dialysis like uh, two to three times a week. And uh, when he knew that, in those days, the machines, you had like one or two machines in the big hospitals only. So he bought his own machine. And um, one day he was going to the American University to, uh, to make his own dialysis. When a lady came to him, he, of course he didn't know her, and she came to him and she was begging to, uh, for help because her, she had an 18-year 
old son, he who needed dialysis. And the, the hospital, they wouldn't take him because she had no money to pay. So my, my, the, my father's reaction was, okay, fine, so put him on my machine. And um, he called the director of the hospital and said, okay, fine, this is my machine. Uh, you don't have to, he doesn't have to pay for it. So put him on it. And when you finish, you call me. So in fact, after the guy, this, the young, this young gentleman finished his uh, dialysis, my father went to his own. And uh, the first thing that he did after he finished, that he went up to the, uh, to Baabda, which is the presidential palace. And uh, the, the president of the Republic in those days, it was uh, Samim Bek Frangi, and he was a close friend of me. And my, my father told him the story. And he said, look, I mean, the, I would like to help. Now you are a president, and it's nicer if you can do it, otherwise you are going to force me to do it. And you have the Ministry of Health should take care of this problem. And dialysis should be done free in the hospitals. And he promised him that. And in fact, the second day he called him and he said, all right, we gave all the instructions and all these hospitals will, will have dialysis machines and it will be done free for, for the whole Lebanese. The Royal House of Ghassan is headed by His Imperial and Royal Highness Prince Garios El Shmoa of Ghassan Al Numan VIII, a direct descendant of the last ruling Ghassanid princes, the prestigious El Shmoa family, the sovereigns of Al Ahuda and Zgaja Zewi, current Lebanon since 2008, Prince Garios has been traveling all over the world, meeting with political and religious leaders and giving lectures and interviews. His Imperial and Royal Highness was responsible for the accreditation of the Royal House of Ghassan with the United Nations, having the special consultative status with the Economic and Social Council since 2016. Also in 2019, was officially recognized by the government of the Lebanese Republic by a unanimous vote of the Cabinet of Ministers expressed on the Presidential Decree Number 5800 2019, signed by the President and the Prime Minister. Today, an official Lebanese branch of the Royal House of Ghassan is headed by His Imperial and Royal Highness Prince Sheikh Salim El Shimor the Crown Prince of Ghassan. The head of the Royal House of Ghassan received historical recognition in 2020, having its sovereignty and titles recognized by the Global Imams Council, the world's largest non-governmental body of Muslim leaders, both Sunni and Shia, with the participation of over 1,300 Muslim clerics from all over the world. The Equestrian Order of Michael Archangel, the official representative of the 1,500-year-old Ghassanid Knights, one of the first protectors of the Holy Land. It's documented that the Ghassanids were the first Knights protectors of the Holy Land under the Byzantine Empire around 500 years before the First Crusade and the creation of the First Orders of Chivalry. Although not organized in orders per se, the Ghassanids were the first defenders of Christianity in history to incorporate what's known today as a code of chivalry, originated from the Arab concept of moruwa, which means bravery in war, hospitality, respect for women and for honor, and protection of the weak and the orphans. Thus, Ghassanid chivalry developed in the 6th century AD and was spiritualized by Christianity a process that brought it close to the Christian version of chivalry in medieval Europe. The Ghassanids' commitment to Christian chivalry as one of the ideals that they developed and tried to live up to, especially in their wars, has hitherto been an unknown chapter in the history of this concept. Professor Irfan Shahid, PhD. Under the Royal House of Ghassan, in special consultative status with the United Nations since 2016, the order invites men and women of pure intention from all religious denominations to join this international group responsible for several humanitarian and cultural projects in several countries of the world. We have two categories of knights and dames. First, 
the people that have achieved excellence in their profession or in humanitarian field. Also people that have amazing life experiences making them role models. The second category is people that are wanting to make the difference, that are willing to contribute and work for the cultural and charitable initiatives. That service can come as a donation, sponsorship, recruitment, etc. But we need people willing and able to help us to make a powerful impact in the world. The order is recognized by some of the main political and religious leaders in the Middle East, and even being interreligious was recognized by different Christian leaders. And in 2016, the order was canonically erected in the Roman Catholic Church by His Excellency Bishop Don Roberto Francisco Feveria Paz of the Diocese of Campos, Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, recognizing the order as a valid canonical organization according to the laws of the Catholic Church as a chivalric association. The order is also recognized by heads of state like the presidents of Lebanon and Albania. One of our main missions is the preservation of Christian minorities in the Middle East. We created the initiative One Voice for Christians, and in the last decade, I personally visited some of the main Christian leaders from all the denominations all over the world, raising awareness about the ongoing genocide and exodus of Christians from the Middle East, which will culminate, if nothing is done, with the complete extermination of all Christian communities there in less than three decades. The One Voice Foundation CEO, His Excellency, Mr. Antoine Collegian. The foundation was created as part of the One Voice for Christians initiative of the Royal House of Ghassan. The ultimate goal of the One Voice for Christians initiative is the creation of the Middle Eastern Christian Council to strongly represent all denominations of Middle Eastern Christians as a major international political and diplomatic player and the Council's Observatory to centralize all the information regarding persecuted Christians in the Middle East. La source de la chrétienté est ici en Orient. Le Christ est né ici. Il a prêché ici. Il a vécu ici. Il est mort ici. Il a ressuscité ici. N'était-ce le christianisme oriental, il n'y aurait plus de christianisme occidental. Moi, je crois que euh, une activité diplomatique des contacts à haut niveau de la part de la Fondation qui a peut-être les moyens d'arriver à ces hautes sphères, de travailler à changer la mentalité des dirigeants occidentaux. I'm very touched and I commend Mr. Kalajian for his wonderful work even during the pandemic, being able to organize this amazing campaign giving 60 tons of baby formula with more than half a million dollars in partnership with Caritas France and Caritas Lebanon. The Prince Garios Stiftung, President His Excellency Dr. Michael Hesseman, best-selling author with over 40 books published, according to HuffPost, one of the most important religious historians in the world. Accredited as a journalist by the Holy See Press Office, he is one of few academic historians who have been granted access to the Vatican's secret archives. The Prinz Garius Stiftung Deutschland was founded in Bonn in 2016 and is recognized as a non-profit organization in Germany. Its objectives are to support Christians in the Middle East, the care, education and training of Christian war orphans, support persecuted and displaced Christians, and the preservation and promotion of the culture of Oriental Christianity of all denominations. The Prince Gabriel's Foundation in Germany was founded in 2016 when uh, we learned about the great emergency situation of Christianity in the Middle East and we found a lot of uh, very um, influential people who wanted to help and who got involved with um, His uh, Royal Highness Prince Gabriel. We were invited to Berlin to um, a high-level conference on um, Christianity in, in the Middle East and religious freedom and were received by um, some of the leading um, heads of the at that time Merkel administration, uh, including um, the um, president of the German parliament, 
including the head of the CDU fraction, Volker Kauder, uh, which was the um, governing party at that time, party of uh, Mrs. Merkel. And um, so um, we opened the way, um, we paved the way, so to say, for um, some help and initiative and solidarity with the Christians in the Middle East. Indeed, we were able for the foundation uh, to support um, Christian refugees who came to Germany. As you might know, about 2.5 million refugees uh, came to Germany just between uh, 19, uh, 2015 and um, 2019. And um, uh, we worked together with the Bishop of the Coptic Orthodox Church, uh, Bishop Damian, Amba Damian, uh, who has a monastery in, um, in the center of Germany and um, he supported uh, Christian refugees from both uh, Syria, Iraq and Egypt and uh, in this project uh, we were able to um, support uh, the building of a church in a refugee camp from the funds of the Prince Garius Foundation which received uh, nationwide attention by the media. Indeed for the purpose of fundraising uh, we not only organized um, a charity dinner um, in uh, zones near Dusseldorf um, was a very prominent participation, including um, representatives of the Coptic Orthodox and the Syrian Orthodox Church. Um, but uh, we also organized a charity concert with a famous Syrian Orthodox Assyrian singer um, in uh, the Vatican in the um, German um, cemetery Camposanto Tortonico Church, um, which uh, is um, there for 1200 years. For 1200 years, there's a German enclave within the Vatican and um, a cemetery for German pilgrims, but also a church and a cultural center, so to say. And uh, there um, we had um, with Sarah, who was our wonderful um, Assyrian singer. We had a beautiful concert which was visited by uh, several amb ambassadors and members of the Roman Curia. In the future, we want to support um, Christianity, especially in the Lebanon. Um, thanks God, the situation in Syria calmed down. And um, since we um, terrorist groups like Islamic State and um, Al Nusra and, and FSA are not um, as influential, they're more or less defeated and just um, act in the um, Turkish border area under the patronage of um, Erdogan. But um, Lebanon is in, in quite a bad situation, both um, politically and because of the many refugees who came there. So in the future, we will concentrate our activities on help in the Lebanon. The Royal Ghassanid Academy of Arts and Sciences. President, His Excellency Professor Dr. Thomas Schirmacher. Current Secretary General of the WEA, World Evangelical Alliance, the world's second largest Christian organization with 600 million followers worldwide. Considered to be one of the world's leading scholars on interreligious dialogue, has over 100 books published. The Royal Ghassanid Academy of Arts and Sciences is a high academic institution based in Bonn, Germany, and with representation in Lebanon, Jordan, Brazil, the United States and Canada. Its purpose is to congregate acclaimed scholars and artists from all over the world to promote culture in all its manifestations and expressions. Another main goal is to bring education to poor countries, especially in the Middle East. The Royal House of Ghassan and its sister organizations are fulfilling the millennial legacy of leadership preservation of the Ghassanid culture and chivalric principles, interreligious dialogue, and protection of ethnic and religious minorities all over the world. That's the Ghassanid royal legacy. If you'd like to make a difference and be part of our projects and initiatives, please contact us at www.royalghassan.org. The Royal House of Ghassan is a charitable organization in the United States of America, and therefore your donation is tax-deductible under the Internal Revenue Code.